Across the world, the race is on, a never-ending quest to feed, house and clothe the swelling global population. And with the growing concern of climate change, the dilemma of how to sustainably power this global growth is getting bigger. Energy production and use is considered to be the single biggest contributor to global warming, accounting for at least two-thirds of human-induced greenhouse gas emissions around the world. Energy is the leading cause. It's why we are here. It's, how, it's why we are having this, you know, climate change impact. More than 81% of sub-Saharan Africa uses biomass energy. This means that as much as we talk about renewable energy, Africa is still faced by energy poverty. In Africa, perhaps, we need to think about how we are contextualizing energy transition. We need to think about the readiness that these countries have on energy transition. We need to think about monitoring all the efforts on, on the transition and now adding the justness and the inclusiveness to this picture. There's even a bigger, there are bigger things to think about. At the heart of the bustling city of Nairobi in Kenya sits the nerve center of the Alliance of Civil Society Organizations for Clean Energy, Access. Access is a membership organization, a global coalition of civil society organizations, INGOs and other NGOs interested to advocate for energy access for the poor and to see proper environmental uh, systems globally. In this neighborhood in Kajiado County, some 100 kilometers south of the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, a clear picture of the energy situation in most of sub-Saharan Africa. Here, firewood remains the primary source of energy for cooking. It is all they can access and afford. <laughs> Since its inception in 2014, Access Coalition has been in the forefront in pushing governments and working with community-based organizations and investors to put access to clean and affordable energy at the center of development planning. <laughs> Here in the villages of Bissell to the south of Nairobi, a demonstration is underway of the inner workings of the biogas system that has changed everything in this rural homestead. Such are the projects that Access believes will make a real difference in the African context by dealing with the problem of indoor pollution and destruction of forests as well as ensuring access to affordable renewable energy. In Kenya, we produce more than 2.4 million tons of charcoal annually. What that means is that millions of trees are destroyed in the process of chuckling, meaning that as much as we talk about renewable energy, we still have a challenge in terms of cooking um, methods that we are using. So if we deal with the energy efficiency in the area of cooking, this will achieve a lot.
energy access is different in different contexts and what access does is that it contextualizes this and makes sure that um, we uh, support the national implementation of uh, SDG 7. So SDG 7 is present in the national uh, renewable energy policies or energy policies and laws of uh, countries and so we make sure that uh, the CSOs are involved in these processes and those CSOs that are involved in those processes are capacitated to be able to advocate in the right way and that's both in terms of the evidence and also in terms of how they present themselves. The implementation of sustainable development goal number seven that focuses on universal access to energy has become even more urgent with less than a decade to the 2030 deadline. Universal access to energy by 2030 is lagging behind. We are not on track to achieve SDG 7, meaning if we don't have we don't put in place innovative uh, financing mechanisms, innovative, you know, systems to untrace the challenges that we are facing. We are not, we will not be able to achieve 100% universal access to energy by 2030. The realization of SDG 7 is, however, part of a broader set of three work streams that guide the operations of the coalition in its three regional nodes spread in different parts of Africa. The work streams of access are the national implementation of SDG 7, AFDB and World Bank group engagement, and capacity building of CSOs. And through those three work streams, access has developed regional strategies in Ghana, in uh, Zimbabwe, and in Kenya. And these cover the East, West, and Southern Africa regions, where we ensure that the strategies are used um, in the engagement processes and in the capacity building processes and the access secretariat is fully involved in those. The energy transition has to be within context. In East Africa perhaps we would be talking about oil and gas. In uh, Southern Africa we would be talking about coal and in, East, uh, and in West Africa we would be talking about oil and it's thinking about all of these and how they fit. Working from where we are, what do we need to do so that we ensure that the energy transition is highly contextualized and all the policies and all the efforts are put in the right places. On this day, they visit Huange in the northern part of Zimbabwe, a key mining area for coal, the world's single biggest contributor to human-induced climate change. They focus on coal here because it is directly responsible for nearly half of carbon dioxide emissions globally and contributes more than 70% of total emissions from the electricity sector. Yet it remains at the heart of Zimbabwe's energy mix. Zimbabwe currently has got a reliance of over 43% on thermal uh, power generation for its uh, uh, energy needs. So it is very important for us today to, to see how the just transition is going to also impact and affect on the energy access uh, and the energy needs of the community. The Huange community wants to be part of the energy transition providing solutions to problems they have experienced with coal mining in this solar-rich region. And they emit a lot of gases. You can just, in the evening you go out there, you can smell a lot of gases throughout the village. So we are not even safe with this coal mining. If we close it down, we might lose jobs, we might lose, but we can be a better people from that because there are a lot of things that are happening which are bad in the community as compared to what we can actually gain if the coal is actually shut down. I think it's better for the government or the country as a whole to move away, to find another way, another better mechanism or else to another better means for mining, like to reduce the mines. We are talking about Africa relying on uh, 69% of their power coming from fossil fuels, yet Africa has the as abundant uh, supply of renewable energy. We are talking about sun, which can really supply Africa's energy, uh, you know, energy need for the rest of the, you know, the, the, the time. This is an, an advantage that our counterparts in the global north do not have. But why are we really relying on the fossil fuel? So as Africans and as um, African governments, we need to rethink about uh, our priorities in terms of renewable energy, in terms of uh, financing and prioritizing renewable energy, uh, you know, sources. Access Coalition is also working with financing institutions and investors to put finance where it is most needed 
and where the impact will be greatest. Governments, investors and other stakeholders are concentrating more on you know, the big uh, infrastructure of uh, projects, talking about transportation, talking about industries to cut down their emission, which is very good. It's a step in the right direction. But who is talking about the emissions that are occurring from the household level? Who is talking about the Africans who are dying because of the indoor air pollution? Carbon dioxide is one of the dangerous uh, greenhouse gas that is leading to climate change. Why are we then not addressing that issue? Why should cooking kill in Africa? So we are calling upon governments, we are calling upon investors to prioritize um, clean cooking aspects, to prioritize decentralized energy systems because with that we are able to ensure that we achieve universal access to energy by 2030 and we will be sure that all Africans, 100% will have access to energy by 2030. At the moment, the bulk of financing in the electricity sector is concentrated on the development and maintenance of national grids, as opposed to more targeted community-based energy systems that will leave no one behind. Talking about like the African Development Bank, a lot of financing is going to ensuring you know, transmission infrastructure for grid connection. But less than 1% of their budgets is going to decentralized energy systems where majority of the people are found. We are talking about two thirds of African, uh, African economies relying on the grid, which is really unreliable. And this means that most of the times they will have to rely on the gensets. Look at Nigeria, for example. They rely a lot on generators which use diesel for that matter. And diesel is one of the uh, key, uh, you know, climate change concerns that we have because diesel produces, you know, greenhouse gases. And what Access has been doing is to advocate for decentralized energy systems because we understand that most of the people without access to energy cannot and will, ne and will never be reached with the, the grid, you know, connection. We need to accelerate electricity connection through off-grid so that our clinics can be well connected, so that our vaccines can be stored, our mothers are able to deliver any time of the day, our children can study longer periods because they have electricity through off-grid by solar, security will be enhanced. Finally, we need to know that Electricity must be redefined as an enabler to business, as a catalyst to industrialization. We must look at electricity beyond the lighting. The coalition has been part of all the major climate change discussions, such as the Africa Regional Forum for Sustainable Development, as well as the high-level dialogue on energy, and is taking a clear set of messages to COP26 in Glasgow. So we are calling upon, uh, you know, uh, decision makers, first and foremost, to adopt a needs-based uh, planning, needs-based approach to planning when it comes to energy, so that the needs of all people, from the grassroots level to the highest, are prioritized and in decision-making processes. Second, we are calling for, you know, the Global North countries and other stakeholders to ensure that fossil fuel subsidies are really channeled to support energy access uh, in the African countries because this is where the access, energy access challenge is uh, highest. Sustainable development goal number seven will only be achieved if we have reliable, affordable and put a lens of equity in terms of energy. We might not achieve issues of energy if we do not discuss about equity in terms of energy transition and also that energy must be affordable so that we can reach the last mile of connectivity to our people in our countries in the sub-Saharan Africa.